We pick up right where we left off with this movie and creating our second control lever to change the behavior of the eyes. Our first bone is selected from our last control lever we made. We need to select the second one. I'll click on that, verify that I have the eye controls lever selected, and I'm going to add a new smart bone. We'll name this the exact same name as the bone, or else the program won't automatically select it. Now before I click OK here, I do want to point something out. You'll notice we put constraints on here, and when I did the first one, I turned or rotated that bone all the way to the right till it hit the constraint. This lets you know or gives you a visual cue to how significant the action is going to be. Up straight up is nothing, over to the constraint is fully activated. Now, if I go to the left, I can create a different type of morph for the narrow and apply that with narrow space, the number two, just like you do with the other smart bones to create a secondary action with the same bone. All right, I've got squint started. I'll click OK. That bone highlights, we're ready to go to work. So let me go ahead and come over to the rotate bone tool, keyboard shortcut R, and I'll rotate this all the way over to the right for a full deflection, full effect. I'll come down to the eyes layer, and now we're going to make them a little bit squinty. Since I'm on a vector layer, the tools change. I'll press T for translate, and I'll drag this one point by clicking on it down so we get our somewhat skeptical type of character here. And I don't want the eyes to be perfectly alike. The asymmetry is a little easier to look at. I'll choose G and drag around this first eyebrow here. And I'm actually going to press T now for translate. Move this down, R for rotate, and rotate this just a little bit. I'll repeat this on the other side so we can go ahead and get a little more of a complex eye action in with this. T for translate, I'll move it down. And then we'll use R for rotate. And we can, if we want, go ahead and introduce some of these extra deformers on here. We can shear it a little bit, we can bend it just a little bit, we can even skew it a little bit. Or if we want to move individual points here, come back to the keyboard shortcut T. That moved a little too far. Click off the object and get this point of the eyebrow out of the eye here. We can even curve that up just a little bit. That's a nice look. With that done, I'll come back to the main line, double click on it and our characters return to their static look. When I come back to eye controls now, if I grab, say, the bone rotate tool right here, and I select this bone and rotate it, we'll see that something funny just happened. There's no behavior in this bone's rotating by itself. Well, this is for when you get into the animation itself. If we take our timeline over here out of zero, where we create all these morphs and do all our drawing, and say we start at 24, and we'll get into animation later on, so I'm skipping a couple steps. But if we happen to bend this bone now, we see that we're getting this nice little bit of squinting going on. Likewise, if I come over here and grab the secondary or the first bone for the narrowing, I can bring the eyes together. And, of course, I can work them both simultaneously. So this gives you a nice visual control to go ahead and create some pretty sophisticated interactions with your characters or any object in your scene using control levers.